when we talk about history, we think that history is fossilized, something in the past, and is dead. The truth is, history is always recreating itself. What is present will become past. And that is why our history will have impact not just on the present, but how history will shape the future. And it's important to ask ourselves, therefore, what are we living for? What is the purpose of life? My dear brothers and sisters, for us Christian precisely, we thank Jesus, our resurrected Lord. He shows us the meaning of history, the meaning of our life. In spite of the infidelities of man, in spite of the fact that history has been a history of failures, infidelities, the Lord has come to redeem history. The Lord has come to help us to rewrite our story so that we will have a good ending. That is why Christians, we speak of salvation history. That history is a saving grace of God. So, in order to sanctify our history, in order to recreate our history, we must first begin by living out the story. Every one of us has a story. All of us are like characters in the story, in the play. Why do we assume a certain character? It is a mystery. Some of us are called to be rich, some are poor, some are strong, some are healthy, some are successful, some are not. Why have we been put in that place? It is the grace of God. It is divine election. There is no need for us to resent. All we need to do is to make sure we play that part of the story well and the story will always have a good ending. Everyone will be happy if only everyone plays the part of that story. It is not enough to lift our story in order to help us to be more human. We need to tell our story. Every one of us has a story to tell about our past, about our present, and our aspiration for the future. When we articulate our stories, we have to connect others with us and others can connect with us. It is only when we begin to tell stories that we become personal with each other. Otherwise, we are strangers. It's for this reason, sometimes we see a person is just only a business partner, a worker, is because we have not heard the person's story. Stories, when they are told, were jealous. That is why even in your own family, if you find that your family members are getting apart, it's because you don't have time to tell each other your story. If you use this COVID-19 pandemic during this circuit breaker and find time to tell your story, it will bring healing, it will bring unity, and all of you will be even more connected. Stories, especially when they are broken, hurtful stories. That is why any one of us who is suffering, we need to articulate our pain to a priest, to a counsellor, to a confidant, to a friend. If we have no one to tell our stories, we will fall into depression. Because why? We become alone. We become disconnected with people. And when we are disconnected, when we feel alone, 
This is where people commit suicide because they have no one to hear their stories. But when we start telling our stories, the healing has begun. But the story does not end there. Telling our stories is the first stage to find healing. The next step is to interpret the story, to understand the story. It's very important. Everyone must be given an opportunity to articulate his pains in life if we want to find healing. Telling our story is just only the first step. We need interpretation. We need to make sense of our story to find integration in life. We must be able to connect all the different events of our life. Then, life becomes meaningful. Suffering that has no meaning will lead us to fall into depression and negativity. Meaningless suffering does not empower us. But when we suffer for a good reason, when we know the purpose of the suffering we go through in life, when we see that greater grace comes up from disgrace, then we begin to appreciate and thank God for all that we have gone through. That our setbacks in life, our failures, our few relationships, the situation we were born in, not a perfect situation, but all these things actually are meant to help us to find greater meaning, greater purpose for a greater goal ahead of us. That is the reason why when we are able to integrate the events of our life, this is where we find healing. When we tell our stories, we begin to make sense of our life. When our life has a meaning and has a purpose, we do not mind going through sufferings and trials because a greater good comes out of it and we feel that we have lived a worthwhile life. And finally, what else do we do? We need to celebrate our stories. We need a place to celebrate all these events in our life. For us Catholics, we are so privileged. Jesus has left us the Eucharist. That is why the Eucharist must be celebrated at least once, every Sunday at least, in order to relieve the stories of our lives. At every Mass, what do we do? We bring our own stories at every Eucharistic celebration. We tell God our pains, our sorrows, our failures, our aspirations, and He forgives us. At the Word of God, the Lord enlightens us and helps us to connect our stories with His story so that we begin to see there is a larger picture in all that we are doing. There is a bigger story overarching our own little stories. And in the Eucharist, we have thanksgiving. We give praise to God. My dear brothers and sisters, this is truly a beautiful experience. Then we can encounter the presence of God when we begin to share our stories, to celebrate our stories. During this COVID-19 pandemic, tell your stories to all those loved ones at home. Hear each other out. And I can tell you honestly, you begin to feel more bonded. You begin to feel the presence of God in your midst, in your family. Don't allow this circuit breaker, this time to be spent without getting something out from it. It is a grace of God. Tell your story and help each other to see your story in the light of God's love and His divine plan for you.